Hi everybody, it's me, Adi. Welcome to Estamos Live. Okay, let's pin this comment. We have an amazing show for you. I am so excited for everybody. It's going to be awesome. As usual, largest hoops, the kind of hoops that one could fit an arm into. And it's gonna be so good. So I'm gonna give everybody a minute to get in here. Let me pin the comment, let's not lose it. There we go. Hello everybody, Jeannie is here. Janine is here, so it's already amazing. I'm so excited. I'm gonna give everybody another minute and then I'm going to request her and we're gonna have an awesome, super fun show. For everyone out there who is a Roswell, New Mexico stan, this is for you. And if you are not a Roswell, New Mexico stan, what are you doing? So yeah, I guess we have a couple more seconds. I'm seeing people filtering in. I have my super over the top interview doc open. I hope you can tell I have a tan. I just got back from the desert. But I, you know, wore a mask. I got tested before I went. We're being safe and we're at the two minute mark. So uh, let's let Janine in. And she is requested. She's doing together. Oh no, my hoop. <laughs> See, it's very large. Flew directly out of my ear. Hi, darling. I love you. <laughs> That's How it. are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you, babe? I'm good. I, I put on my face and my giant hoops that fly out of my ears for you. I went with my modest hoops. I love that I, for you. I almost did my giant ass gold, rose gold ones, but there's always the next time we do it. It is. It's always the next time. And it's not like this will be the last time we talk. So everyone, please wonder, uh, welcome the wonderful Jimmy Mason, queen of Roswell, New Mexico, former So You Think You Can Dance, wonderful pro. My boss is obsessed with that fact about you. And book club queen. <laughs> oh, I love you. Thank you for that intro. I've been so wistful and nostalgic about, yeah. I'm in New York right now, like, pre-COVID oh, times and I was thinking about yeah. the last time you and I hung out yeah. here at the offices and it's just crazy oh, boy, oh, that crazy. was so far away now that was lifetimes ago now I'm in LA and you're in New York I know I know we'll, we'll yes. jump on the same same wavelength at some point yes again, because but. this is where I live now that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. So start off, I've been doing this everybody. So what are your preferred pronouns? How do you identify your background? Just to like be totally open and honest. I love that. Um, she and her are my preferred cool. pronouns. Um, and yeah, I, I, since I'm Cuban, I kind of, via way of Spain, we know that much about my family's journey. I'm cool with Hispanic or Latina, Latinx. Yeah, you all of them. All the above. <laughs> So the other thing that I love asking people to kind of open this up, we've already talked about hoops. How is your relationship with glam been? Since people love to be like, I don't do glam anymore, but look at you. Look at oh, you. God bless New York City. We're doing well enough yeah, that are. our nail salons are open and I've got my little like neighborhood spot on the corner. So I went in and checked in with my girls today and got a polish because they look fantastic. Oh, you know, red really feels i mean connected to my soul as a latina yes. it's a big theme in our show and roswell liz also we that's borrowed from janine yeah. but it felt so right to give to her as well but she it is her armor and um it's a recurring theme in our show where she uses it to just feel connected to her power and her latinaness and it does the same for me i i a day can be turned around by rocking a lip like you have on right now and putting a little <laughs> A yes, fun. I it's love that. Conquer. It's how the reason conquer. I've been asking is because I know like culturally everyone's like, I don't own a bra and I've never seen makeup in seven months. But like in our communities and our culture, like being glam, like having that connection to like self care and like yeah. looking as you want to look, not the way other people want you to look is so big and so powerful. Absolutely. Like I think about the way my mom glams it up, like for her, it is 100% what she wants. She mm -hmm. is that overdressed on any yes. occasion versus underdressed ever. And for her, it's a point of pride. And I think it's more connected to her journey and as a woman and as a successful yeah. woman than maybe she even knows. <laughs> she, she loves it and she enjoys yeah. it. But I see the spine of it being something where it's like, yo soy la que, you know what I mean? Like I am this woman who's gonna conquer and watch me do it. Not only being a badass, but looking like a badass, you know? Yes, completely. Okay.
And you start talking about self care. Obviously, you are very into books. You love reading. I think that's another book thing for everybody out there who is not in both of our DMs. We've been talking about books all day. All day. <laughs> so, Girl. how has that been for you during you know this era where people are kind of isolated and also like we're not getting as much entertainment as we usually would? Absolutely, it's fun to have an option that's limiting screen time in a world where it's this is what we have is to do the virtual thing, you know, yeah. um, and. I've always been a book lover, but the other thing that I am and has really been amplified in this pandemic is a lover of small businesses. And I love a bookstore existing. I love the yeah. option of a bookstore being in any little town I'm going through or spending time in. So adamantly a supporter of uh, buying a paper book. And if you are not going to, and you want to buy for your iPad or your Kindle, there are options also, there yeah. are websites um, oh, of course, I forgot the name of the website, but we'll post it later. I've been doing bookshop personally. Bookshop, That's, yes. Yeah. Okay, so it is bookshop, yeah. You know, where you can buy a digital copy through an independent store and get to yes. support the neighborhood spot. So, yay, small businesses. Yeah. Now, bookshop is in my vibe. And then also, at the beginning of this, I did a big order from the last bookstore in downtown LA. Oh, yes. I love them. Oh, my yes. God. Their, their whole book display, it's like a, it's a Pinterest dream in there. I know. My roommate has been, he just talked about it so much that I was like, I guess I'm ordering from this place that I've never been to. <laughs> it's so good. I also love Skylight in, in uh, Los Feliz and, and Book Soup in Hollywood, Sunset. It's, there's so many great options in LA. Um, and here I live in New York now and The Strand just opened a new location. So Oh, great. I didn't even know buying. that. Yes, they just opened an Upper West Side location. So I've been, I've been buying there. Um, but the book that I just read that you and I were talking about, yeah. which I know you love too, is Dominicana by Angie yes. Cruz. And she is incredible. She's actually doing a book club um, with Word Up Bookstore, which is up in Washington Heights. And they That's have cool. a Lomas Lit book club going. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. I love that. So check out Angie. She's amazing. And Dominicana is unbelievable you guys oh my god this book has been just like dancing in my head for weeks and i have finished but i don't want to be done with it so i'm starting it soon but for you like what did you connect to so much about it why is it so special to you you know it made me love women more and i didn't think that who knew that was possible who knew who knew it just is i mean angie wrote it for her mom and she talks about it in the intro and her mom's journey from the DR to New York. And it's so in reverence to her and the things that she um, experienced. And um, I've just started becoming friends with Angie via just fangirling over her on Insta. Oh, but it's, I mean, isn't that the best? You yeah. know, I guess it's a perk of everyone being home and, yes. and not being able to connect. I'm just like in my DMs. Like, surprise new friends. friends. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but it's just in such reverence to her, to her journey and the stuff she endured and how even through all of it, you know, she has her first kid and she is um, everything we were just talking about. She is so the matriarch, so the, the provider and the protector of her family and like just um, it's in every cell of her body, you know, that yeah. like standing tall and doing what one needs to do to like do right by her, her ancestors, her family that is so hopeful for her and for her American dream. So, oh my God, check it out. It's so good. Determination. <laughs> Amen. You know, that's really uh, what it is, our fortitude. I yes. Some of the comments has asked if you have read, I believe, Heat on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Oh my God, no, but I love Elizabeth. I, uh, the Poet X was one of my- I was going to say. Liz Orteco picks from season uh, two of Roswell. Well, um, these are books that I pick that are just helping me get back in character with Liz and with like the like, you know, chingona that she is. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's fun. Liz, Elizabeth Acevedo was like such a gift. The Poet X was such a gift. And, and I haven't read um, Clap Before You Land. Mm -hmm. that, yes. Everybody's on Instagram talking about that right now. Right? So yes. That's, that's, that's next. I mm -hmm. love that you were reading Poet X because I bought it from Alegria. The, it's like an Instagram collective, I guess. Love. They have a book club. They have a bookshop also. So I bought that from there. And that's all. All of these things are on my bookshelf. <laughs> Girl, I truly, I love, we spent all day just going back for a night. Yes. Just like, 
giving Gabby each other Rivera's, breaks. Giving Gabby Rivera's, um, Julia takes a, a breath. My wonderful friend at Oprah Magazine, uh, Elena Nicolau, who is a quarter Puerto Rican, and I love to remind her of this. <laughs> she recommended it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'm like, you are Latina. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all of these, please, guys, I truly, as it's like giving such gifts and blessings and giving book recs. So send them over. And you them. said you're kind of using that to get back in touch with Liz. How are you using the book club to do that? Where did that idea come from? I think it's so fun. Oh, thank you. I mean, to be honest, that's it. Fascinating thing about acting is you could talk to 10 different actors and uncover 10 different techniques. Oh, yes. You know, and the, the, the resources and the tools we use to do what we do. And um, books have always been a part of my process as an actor. Um, you know, I, I remember someone telling me once they'd worked, they'd worked on a set that Bradley Cooper worked on. And cool. they said he would come to set every day with his backpack overflowing with books. And I was like, that's me. Like, I, that's the actor image that resonates with my artist, you know. Um, I don't know how to do this by myself. I, I love talking about this. What I love about this gig is collaboration. You know, yes. I love the meeting of minds and building something in the moment. So for me, it feels like having all of these badass women with me in Just my trailer, in, in my head. And, and yeah. they're all like feeding and fueling. And, and you know, I think that the nature of TV right now, we, we don't have a lot of Latinas on TV, particularly not leading television series, which is just crazy. So <laughs> I, I love to have not just my own experience as a as a first generation Cuban American, <laughs> but the experiences of Angie and Elizabeth and Chanel Clayton, who we talked today. And you know, Gloria Calderon Kellett, who I'm constantly communicating. Amazing. With. You know, I love having all of them feeding in. So like, the chingo on that is Liz Orteco, you know? Yes. And I was rewatching the finale last night to be Ooh. ready for this. The first thing I want to ask you, speaking of keeping everything in your brain, so much happens in that one episode of television is 42 minutes long. How do you as an actress just kind of handle all of that and just kind of keep track of it just as a performer? Oh, thank you. Um, okay, P several things. The first being I work with an incredible acting coach, Victor oh, Lopez. So back to collaboration. <laughs> We love and collaboration he, here. Oh, and he's Mexicano too, so it's just another bit of Liz. It's such a powerful resource. Um, but uh, so I do a lot of, I'm such a book nerd, like, or I'm such a nerd, I should say. Like, I love, <laughs> I love a Staples run, you know what I mean? So I do, I do you're a lot. You're getting post-its, you're getting Sharpies. Michael Vlamis, who plays Michael Garrett on the show and is my alter ego, um, <laughs> love him. He always is just baffled at, at my post-its and <laughs> note to myself and like color coordinated. He's just like, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I definitely, definitely do a lot of work outside a set, but then also, you know, it, on set, we have so many, everybody just loves this and, yeah. and is so present every day on set. So our writers are incredible right now popping in and talking to them about what they're forming for season three, you know, everything, um, everything comes with, with so much back history yes. that yeah. doesn't necessarily make it. So everything's so informed that on the day we could all be like, and don't forget this color. And it's like, yes, yes, yes. That's right. That, that feeling of this in her life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just the nature of a sci-fi show girl. It's a lot. It's so much. <laughs> and then the finale. Wow but it kind of ends on a really hopeful and bittersweet note for Liz. So is there anything you really hope to see for her? I mean, she's at, she's at the edge of the country. She's in California. Is there yeah. anything you're like hoping for? You know, I think like off the top, well, first of all, what I loved about it is like, this is Liz's show, you know, yes. and it's a show about aliens, but it's a show about a Mexican American woman Yes. who feels so connected to her hometown and to taking care of her family and her mixed status family at that, which yes. she feels so vulnerable. Um, but that she has gotten to a point in her journey where she's like, no mas, I'm an, I have to go and do me. I have to yes. separate myself from this locura, from all this craziness here. And I need to honor the scientist that I am, yes. you know? Um, 
I really, it felt so right and so far from the trope, which I think it could be such a cheesy, you know, um, yeah. teen moment. Like she's not, she's a woman and she's yeah. like, she is. enough is enough. I love that we can get to that point on our show, you know, where, where they're adult enough to be like, no, you know, 29 year old woman at that point would be like, and let's like more drama, yeah. <laughs> you know, she'd be like, let's pour it on. Yeah, she'd be like, hi, <laughs> to California I go for yeah. opportunity, for family, you know. But, you know, I obviously can't say much. But what I do yeah. think I can tell you is her time in California is, of course, going to be brief because Roswell has so much to pull her back. But her journey of where she lies as a priority in her own life is very much going to be our season three spine. So I'm, I'm pumped about that. It's not called Bakersfield, California or wherever she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you to know that my dad is in the comments. He's watching right now. And he's thanking you for your work in Roswell, New Mexico. He's I love you, mommy. Love yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's apparently a huge fan. Who knew? Well, <gasps> maybe I do. I'm sure he's told me many times whenever I talk about it, he's like, I love that show. That's so sweet. I'm yeah. so glad. It's your dad and my dad, at least. And then, it's, and then it's, it's the young... to the fan club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And something we talked about previously is that it's so special to have a, a cast uh, that's, that's not just you're the one Latino or Latinx oh. person, where you're able to see so many of our different shades our ethnicities beyond just one word. So what has that been like? How is it on set now that you're like into your third season almost? How has that grown for you? It's just, it's such a gift. And it's that thing where certain days it just really strikes you as how did, how did I get here? And how is this so routine here? And it's just like a lovely little reminder. But, you know, I had so many scenes with, um, Michael Trevino, of course, who plays Kyle on our show, and he's an East LA guy, and um, uh, Justina Adorno, who played Steph this past season, and it would just be the three of us, and we'd just be laughing and doing our, like, you know, Spanglish, and um, you just go, like, this is so cool, <laughs> and it's not what, the scene isn't about our, yeah. our you know, yes, yes, and um, it's, uh, it's really amazing, and so, um, I'm just, you know, I, I try to express as much gratitude to our team and to our, our amazing showrunner, Chris Hollier, as I can. Um, and he just, but through the whole of it, all I do is just keep being like, and what if the boyfriend were black? <laughs> yes. And <laughs> what if yes. he was Afro Latinx? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just, just keep being like a little, you know, um, I try to just do right by us and just I mean, be an advocate for us. Someone in the comments did say, how are you using your privilege as a white Latina to kind of expand what it means to be Latina? And that is actually a very good example of it. Oh, absolutely, girl. You know, um, that, that was something I was very passionate about. And we have success. We now have Afro, an Afro-Latina in our writer's room. Um, That's amazing. So that was something that wasn't, she wasn't even with us, I don't know, in season two. So we're, we're getting better and better. We now have like, I've been emailing with them as part of this She Se Puede initiative. That yes. I, I she figured Se Puede, guys. Have. Now on Instagram. Now on Insta. <laughs> and, and I'm like, this is so cool. It's like the four of us emailing these, these Latina writers and, and my, sorry, babe. That was weird. Um, and You're back. You're back. <laughs> and, uh, um, and the four of us are emailing. Difficulties. <laughs> the technical difficulties, girl. Yeah. Um, the four of us are emailing him, and I'm just like, this is rad. You know, this is, yeah. these are better figures than we even had um, in season one. So, um, but yeah, it's something I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so passionate about. I, I, I feel such a responsibility, and, um, and, and, and that's both. And that's also like, it's, a, it's an honor, you know? And it's something that um, I feel, I feel the, the work and the, um, the sweat and tears that have been put in to put me in a position where I'm afforded this. And so I feel like I don't give myself a choice to not be the squeaky wheel. You know, I don't give myself a choice to be quiet in moments when I realize there's an opportunity for us to have some sort of growth and, and, and um, to, to ascend here. 
even if I want to throw up, even if it makes me, oh my gosh. I mean, um, my Instagram live literally turned on me last week. So you're doing okay. It's so weird because I had on the like, do not disturb, but it's, it's still anyway. Yeah. Um, so even in those moments where I, I want to yeah. throw up or it's hard to do it, or you're like, Oh my God, I can't yes. right now. Um, I just remind myself of, of you and of all my other, you know, women who are thriving and who are, who feel that responsibility and that honor of getting to be in that position and do right by us. And I go, you know what, right now I'm going to connect to them and do the brave thing. And it's done in two seconds. And then the fruits of it could be incredible and amazing. So it's absolutely worth it. I mean, I'm so impressed by you every single time we talk, you're doing the hard work and I love to see it. Thank you, babe. I really appreciate that because you know I'm just your biggest fan. So thank you. I'm yours. I talk about you all the time. <laughs> but um, so a lot of people in the comments are bringing up Grays. A, I have to say your friendship with Jake is one of my favorite things on Instagram. <laughs> so cute. Can I tell you, we, we celebrated New Year's together this past Oh, I love that. Which I was so that. fun. Jake was like, I don't, I, I was in Miami with my family and Jake I left like, Miami for New Year's. Right. And we like went out on Cayocho on the 30th to this like salsa club, mojitos, no cover, easy peasy. And then the 31st, when it gets like crazy, you stay at home. You know? Yeah, you that's burn. smart. So that was Jake and I this year. He, he didn't know where to go. And then he's like, I think I'm going to come to Miami. I'm like a hundred percent. Great so choice. It was a great choice. But now I'm like, but it brought 2020. So I'm like, this yeah. year, we need to do something new. We need to like the be opposite. opposite. You <laughs> need to opposite the energy somehow. Yes. yes. But I also stayed in this year. I did no ho, just staying inside friend's apartment. It was a great time. It's the, it's the way to do it, man. It just gets too crazy. Yes. And then people want to know, would you go back to Grays? I think you were wonderful on Grays. Thank you. I had the best time. Absolutely. I, I, I adore that cast. I, it's just sort of crazy to me. I feel like yeah. such a, a true fangirl when I think about it, when I sit with it too much, because I just had such a great experience. And then on top of that, my, this opportunity of Rosal came up in the midst of shooting and they were yes. so gracious in the way that they were like, you go do that. You have the opportunity to go lead a show. Do it. They exactly. They wanted me to flourish, and since then, it, there's just been so much support from them. Like, you know, Ellen and Camila, and and I mean, oh God, um, I mean, all of them have just been. Yeah. Katerina, they've all just so been in my corner. Um, uh, oh God, I don't know. Giacomo is. We did. Wow. Just, that man is just wow. Like, so. 100% whenever whenever the time is right I am I am so excited to figure out a way to get back just I mean if not just to hang out with them some more and just be like thanks for being nice <laughs> I can't wait to watch that <laughs> and oh, then the last question just kind of wrap it up I mean I brought up so you think you can dance at the beginning of this what is it like kind of looking back at that that's over a decade for you now that was 2009 so what is it like looking at everything you've accomplished since then crazy. I, that was my first job. I was four days out of high school when I flew to LA to start shooting that. I just graduated. And, um, I never thought that that could happen to me. I, that in itself was incredible and I could go on and then, and then feeling like I wanted to transition and do what I had always intended to do was acting. And there was so much doubt and, and, moments where I was like, should I just take the dance gig and, and yeah. be an ensemble member for a year and it's an incredible gig or should I, you know, keep busting my ass and be in three acting classes a week and, you know, and give it a go. And, and when I think about how much resilience I had in, in staying committed to putting in those 10 years of, of acting now, of just becoming a tr like a real actor and reference yeah. to it. I'm so glad I did. And I, and yeah. I, um, I'm so grateful to that experience. It, it truly just like, it was my thing that just like 
opened up this world for me. Um, and as so we had a little Zoom reunion, which has oh. been the nice part of, of this yeah. pandemic. You sort of like, let me check in with that cast. And, you know, and we all got together and did a Zoom reunion recently. And it was just the most incredible thing. And um, Carla Garcia, who was my roommate, and she's, in, I mean, she's amazing. She's on every, she's on Hamilton right now on Broadway, wow. killing it. <laughs> She's incredible. And she was like, Janine, I'm so proud of you. And I just wanted to cry because it's their journey and my journey and we're all in it together. You know, I see her on stage at Hamilton and I'm just like, holy shit, she did the thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's really special to have a group that you grow with like that. Um, I'm, I'm so proud, proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think, I think that's a beautiful place to leave. Is there anything you want to add? Anything you feel like we haven't talked about? Anything you want to tell people to follow, do, donate, anything? I love it. Okay, I'll say this. Um, definitely follow She Sip With It. It's really yes. exciting what's happening and um, the community that they're putting together there. But one For of everyone who doesn't know what it is, I saw a couple comments. It's a Lat Latinx Woman Digital Cre Collective, not Creative Collective. America Ferreira, Eva Longoria are kind of leading it. It's really, really awesome if you want to follow that. Absolutely. And it has such, that was perfect. And it has such, um, incredible activists, you know, Monica Ramirez and, and, and Carmen Perez are also a part of it and Elsa Collins and, um, you know, s sitting in on a couple of the Zooms and then preparing to launch this thing they've been putting together a lot of what they, the first initiatives they're going to be talking about is voting, you know, of mm -hmm. course, in this year. Big. It's a big thing. And the big thing that, that we talked about, which I found fascinating, is um, how much nervousness and doubt people have in their ability to contribute to democracy and to put their vote in motion. And a lot of people feel such a hesitancy. I don't know enough about the issues. I don't know enough about the candidates and that they write themselves out of being a part of it. And I know I have been guilty of that. And up until recently, really up until the last five years, have I really started to um, feel like, well, you know what? I do have an opinion on what's best for my community, but I need to tell you all that everybody has an opinion on what's best in their community because they are members of their community. Yeah. <laughs> so please, please know that there is no, you know, degree or years being active in community or whatever that qualifies you for voting because you exist in your community, you are qualified to vote. So please do. And as our wonderful Somos uh, editor has pointed out, also follow RG9 Somos if you haven't already, because we have so many great things planned for Latinx Heritage Month and far, far beyond that. So uh -huh. I think we need to support more, not just one. Absolutely. All of yes. it. Yes. I love you guys. Kill me with the stuff you post on this account. You're trying. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're trying. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm so excited for things that we're working on and so excited for you. Also, you need to know if you weren't reading the comments, a lot of people say they want you to be so you think you can dance. I'll start, they're rooting for it. So just so you know. Okay, I'll get my ass back in shape. Look at you. <laughs> you, you're doing great. You're kicking <laughs> alien butt. I think you're ready to dance. Thank you. Thank you. This okay. was so fun, babe. I am sending you the wonderful. biggest cross country this hug. Miss you. You're amazing. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Follow Janine and just have a good week. Be great. Have a great week, guys. Bye, darling. Mwah. Bye, babe. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>